Hey guys, today I wanted to touch on something a little bit higher level, something about methodology, and it's how these really cool animations like this one are made. Stories that have a beginning, a middle, and an end, and are meaningful throughout, so they evolve, and it makes the viewer feel something. TikTok dances are great, there's nothing wrong with them. Tech demos are great, there's nothing wrong with them. But stories are better. So how do they do this? And it's a comment that the creator of this video made that really caught my attention. His name is Iscariotto. And on the Banodoko server, he was saying the hardest part of making this video was to select the shots. So if you're wondering what that means, here's the explanation. Here's how it's made. You see, it all starts with a simple base image. So in this case, I use a workflow that allows me to generate 10 or more, depending on my VRAM, the size of the latent, etc., images at a time. And I pick the one I like the most. And then from there, I go to a second workflow where I pass it through Animate Diff or SVD. In this case, it's SVD to animate it. And sometimes the results are great and sometimes the results are terrible. But the bottom line, it reminds me of a story I read when I first got into Confi UI by a veteran in this industry who said it's a numbers game. And oh boy, do I understand what he means now. So I will have a second part to this video where I explain how you can have more control over your images. But if you don't use IP adapters, control nets, if you don't have a source of movement and custom motion LoRa's, the only way to do things right now is sheer brute force. And what I mean by that is if we take this workflow, what it does is it generates 10 images at a time. And then I pick the one that I'm interested in. Maybe I pass it after that to say a noiser to add more noise to the image to improve its quality. And then after that, maybe it goes to an upscaler and so on. As you can see, everything is controlled by switches and I have access to them over there. And then second, I use SVD or Animate Diff, which is inside a second workflow to animate the scene. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I hope I'm not being too offensive here, but that's just the reality of things. So let's look at the output, shall we? In this case, I got lucky. The first scene, looks pretty consistent with the second. I mean, ultimately we can tell it's not the same saucer, but when it comes to a very quickly made AI generated video, I think it's good enough. Now let me show you the first generation of this. Yeah, we can see it's not that great, is it? And unfortunately you're gonna get a lot more of these than you're gonna get of the first. So it's a numbers game. And by numbers, I mean exactly that, numbers. This is just a very short interval of time where I quickly generate, you can see from the timestamp, video after video after video, image after image after image, and I cherry pick the best ones. In fact, that's how most white paper works, I'm afraid, but that's a story for another time. And in the end, I pick the best one and assemble them in simply in Resolve. So is that it then? Is that the future of Confi UI creators just going through dozens of thousands of images and then pushing the output on YouTube and everyone says, oh, look how wonderful it looks. And you know, same goes to, by the way, the Sora guys, right? Just inputting text prompt after, after text prompt and hoping they'll hit that seed lottery. Well, not quite, because thanks to a free and open source tools like Confi UI, we have access to tools like IP Adapter Plus, we have access to things like Control Nets, and we have things like Reactor to swap the face from one to the other. So in the context of this video here, you can see the face is very blurry. That's a very easy job for Reactor to go and fix. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to import the video into yet another workflow and we're going to swap the face to the one that we want, to the one of the actor that will be in our movie. But this is also a good time to look at how VFX developers currently use tools like Confi UI to improve their workflows. One video that completely changed my perspective on how to use Confi UI is this fantastic one by Brian Howard. It's a, he's a YouTuber, so I highly recommend you go check out his channel, where he creates this really cool looking arachnoid robot that destroys everything in its path. And he's using Maya, and of course he has full control. That's what it's all about. You can see the camera here, you can move it, you can choose the angle of the camera. That's what you want, right? In an ideal world, that's what we would have, but it would be AI generated. Unfortunately, we're not there yet, and I think we're not going to be there for a while. So how does he use Confi UI in his workflow? Well, it's quite useful, he says, for things like weather effects. So for example, he has one frame where it's really raining and he's using Confi UI and a prompt, prompt conditioning to add the puddles, to change the look of the cars and the look of the spider itself. But it's still his angle, his vision, his script. 
And if you like movies, you'll know that this great man, Alfred Hitchcock, once said that a great movie was made of three things. A great script, a great script, and a great script. So when you have someone like Brian using AI to enhance his image, it's not to replace his entire VFX process, it's to enhance it. And I think we're going to see more and more of that. There's another great little anecdote I want to throw in there. Last week, Zion Zamorodi posted this on the Blender subreddit and so many people reported as fake that the video was pulled by the Automod as being, well, filmed with a cell phone or something of that nature. In reality, the video is entirely rendered in Blender and Ryan posted proof of this on YouTube. But I think there's a lesson collectively for us to understand here. It's the use of photorealistic objects, but not just photorealistic. It's the fact that they belong to certain brands that we recognize, the lamp, the table, uh, the speakers, everything is real and belongs in the real world. So it tricks the human brain. And I think there's a lesson for all of us collectively there because tools like Sora, for example, are technically massive achievements. I realize that the physics, the colors, everything is perfect, but it's not reproducible and there's very little control over the output. So going back to Confi, how would I fix a scene like this? Well, I'm going to take this video, I'm going to pass it through a face swap, I'm going to then push it into Resolve and then, and only then, will I have a video that would make this gentleman proud. 